let's take a look at worksheet seven, which is now the beginning. We've set the stage of area and those relationships. And now we're beginning to build to a three-dimensional world, which is volume. And in preparation for that, they want us to think about a particular type of um, shape or solid known as the prism. Now the prism, um, you see a couple examples of it here. Uh, there are lots of examples of prisms in the real world. Anything that's box-like shaped certainly is. Anything that has two identical bases. Um, I guess I'm quickly looking around the room to, to grab something that is um, a prism. I guess here's something. Um, here's a, a board game I have that has, you know, a, this is a rectangular prism, very simple uh, shape. Um, try to see if I've got something cool like a triangular prism, but I don't see anything kicking around that kind of uh, works for that. So for now, we're just going to go with a prism. Uh, has some characteristics that set it uh, set it as alone as its own thing. First of all, there will always be two identical opposite parallel bases. And then the bases will be connected through um, rectangles or squares uh, always because if uh, you have two identical bases, the lines will connect. You know, actually, parallelograms are possible, rectangles, squares, and so on. But all of the shapes we're going to look at are going to be right prisms. Now, uh, you have two types of prisms, uh, or two types of solids of this variety. You have oblique, which means the shape could be kind of tilted, uh, or you could have it where the base and the lateral sides are perpendicular. That's called a right prism. So when you look at um, these diagrams, these are right rectangular prisms or right triangular prisms and so on because the intersections of all of the lines are perpendicular to each other. So um, we get perpendicular relationships in here in terms of between, between the, the base and its lateral side. So we're learning some terminology. You have vertices, you have faces, so instead of sides, they're faces, you have edges, um, and then you have uh, what we call bases and lateral sides. So a couple of new terms there. Uh, um, and so we, we then begin to think about how do we obtain the volume, which is a the, the three-dimensional um, measurement of space, and so we, we go to an idea, what I call the stacking principle. And the idea is that if, so this is a rectangular prism here. And if you have an identical base as you do on the opposite side, think about it this way. Think about very thin slices. So let's say you have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So we just finished area. So if you found me the area of this, and then basically just put slices upon slices, you would obtain the volume. So this is how we think about the formula for this. We think of it in a stacking method. That the idea might be is if you were to just find me the area of one cross-sectional slice of the shape, and then stack it up, over a period of time, over a certain height, right, after over a certain height here, we would keep filling this in and it would fill all the way up, thus creating a volume. And so we learn with prisms, we get a formula of the volume is big B times H, and big B stands for the area of the base. Okay, not, doesn't stand for like B, little b like it did in, in their uh, like area of a triangle. We had a B for base. This is a capital B and it refers to the entire region there. Uh, and it might be a square, might be a triangle, might be lots of things. And then imagine the idea that once you have that area, you're going to start stacking that up on top of each other over and over again to fill the entire space. Therefore, we get volume. 
Now, Cavalieri came along many years ago, and he said, let's talk about these two shapes here. He says, I believe they have the same volume. And here's his conjecture, which is a truth, actually. He said, if they have the same height, and you can see I've tried to denote the same height here. And then he said, if you take a cross section, and he says is that this cross section here, if that area is equal to this area, he says, then, and that's true all throughout the shape, then he says those two have the same volume. Now, in a sense, what he actually told us is something that you can kind of see here. So here is, imagine the volume of this. Does the volume change if everything gets kind of tilted a little bit? No, do you still see all the slices being the same? So whether they were straight up and down like a right rectangular prism, or whether they're bumped out like a oblique one, the slices are the same, the areas are the same, the volume is the same. This is known as the Cavalieri's Principle, and it is a big part of why we understand um, volume to these types of shapes.